Hello everyone, welcome to another episode at Tenly Academy. My name is Manoj and in this episode we are going to learn about S3 pre-signed URLs. Now when you create a S3 bucket in AWS guys, it is private by default. Unless of course you add a bucket policy and open it to the world, which is not recommended by AWS. But sometimes you need to share the files like you know the images, videos that that are there in these uh, private uh, S3 buckets with your customers or your users who do not have AWS security credentials or permissions. And that's where this S3 pre-signed URLs comes in handy. So in this video, we are going to look at what S3 pre-signed URLs are and also I will teach you how to implement it using serverless framework and AWS SDK. So pre-signed URLs, they contain the permission of the creator. So uh, who could be a creator? It could be an IAM user uh, who has long-term credentials or it could be an AWS service like a Lambda function or a EC2 which has an appropriate IAM role associated with it. So those entities can create a S3 pre-signed URLs. And when you create S3 pre-signed URL, that pre-signed URL will contain the permission of either the IAM user or the IAM role until the expiration time. Now, when you have a pre-signed URL, that can be used either to download files or upload files to S3 bucket. When we are creating the pre-signed URL, we'll define this is for uploading or downloading. We'll look at that during our demo. And also, when we are creating the S3 pre-signed URL, we have to specify a bucket name, the operation, which is the get operation or put operation, and also the expiration time, guys. Now, here's something you need to remember. Now, if it is an IAM user who's creating this URL, then uh, you and me both know the IAM users has a uh, long-term credential. So in that case, the expiration of the pre-signed URL will solely depend on the expiration time that you define here. But however, it is a AWS service that uh, assumes an IAM role, then these roles have uh, temporary credentials. So if the roles credentials are expired, then regardless of this expiration time, the pre-signed URL will be expired. Now that is something to remember, guys. Okay, so we are going to implement this architecture in today's video. Now, this is a very simple use case, but uh, commonly used. Now, our idea is to create a signed URL so a user who do not have AWS credentials can use that signed URL and access the uh, files. This could be images, videos in a private S3 bucket. So we start by creating an API gateway. So anyone can make a request to get a signed URL. Then the API gateway will call upon the S3 service and the S3 service will call upon this uh, API method that is get signed URL. So as the parameters for this method, we have to specify the bucket name and the key, the action, and when it is expired. So as a result, you will get the signed URL and the user will use that signed URL to directly access the private S3 bucket. Now, one of the common use of this architecture is to upload to S3 directly from your browser. So if one of your users want to upload to S3 or download from S3 directly from your browser, then you should uh, either hard code the AWS credential in the JavaScript, which is highly not recommended, or else you can use a method like this, you know, get a signed URL and temporarily allow that users to upload or download the objects from the S3. So this is what we are going to implement today. So I'll see you in the other side. All right, guys. Now, if this is the very first time that you are watching one of our videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel because we are releasing a video on every week. Right. So I have opened my uh, Visual Studio code. So I'll go ahead and uh, create a new folder in the desktop. So I'll create a new folder. Let's call it pre-signed URL demo and I'll create it. Open it. Next, we are going to create all our resources from serverless framework. So I have uh, the serverless framework version 1 point something, 1.64, which is one of the older version. You can, of course, use the later version as well. Let's first uh, initialize an NPM project. And then I have a package.json file. And I will now initiate a serverless project by using sls create-t, dash t for template. And there's this template called AWS Node.js. 
Okay, now we have few files. Serverless.yaml is one of that. This is the place where we'll be adding our configuration. So I'll clean up the comments. I will leave the resource section and I will uncomment it rather because we are going to create some resources from our serverless deployment as well. So what are those resources? Now if you can remember, we need to have a S3 bucket. So that is where we are going to upload or download objects using pre-signed URL. But first and foremost, we need to create a S3 bucket. So why not we just uh, go ahead and do that directly? Now in serverless YAML file, under this resource tag, this is just pure cloud formation in YAML format. So as our resource name, so let's call it, this is the uh, private uploads bucket. So this is our private S3 bucket. And this is of type AWS S3 bucket. So the bucket name, now this has to be unique. So let me say in layer demo private bucket. And I wouldn't need this output section, so let's keep it simple. Okay, now this should do. So this is all we need to create a S3 bucket using CloudFormation. So let's add all these uh, resources in the region of uh, USD2. You can pick whatever the region you like. And then we have a default uh, Lambda function, hello. So instead of this hello function, let me create a function called get S3 pre-signed URL. And as a practice, I add the same logical name for the Lambda function as well. And now I will go to this uh, handler file and instead of hello, it has to be pre-signed URL. Now let's invoke this Lambda function using an HTTP event. So I'm gonna add a events array and this is a HTTP event. And the path is, I will add the same name here as well. You can add any path. And the HTTP method is, let's make it a post method, okay? So now let's deploy this and see our resources getting created. So in my terminal, I will do SLS deploy. All right, so the deployment is got completed and I have the URL to trigger my Lambda function as well. But let's open our AWS console and see if this bucket got created. Okay, I'm in my AWS account and in the UST2 region. I'll go to S3 and let me search for the name and layer demo private bucket and here we go. It has been created. So let me open this up. So there's no files in it so far. We are going to add one file, uh, but I just wanted to go to the permission sections. Now, this is a new section that AWS has added to block any public access, but at the moment it is off. I want to turn this on. So none of my files will be publicly accessible. So let's go ahead and add this configuration as well. So I will go to my serverless YAML file and I'm going to add a new attribute called public access block configuration. And here I can define block public ACLs. I will set to true. So there won't be any public ACLs. And also block public policies, ignore public ACLs. And finally, restrict public buckets to true. Let's redeploy. And now if I go ahead and uh, refresh this page, I should see block call public access is now turned on. And have a look, we don't have any bucket policy. And also the public access control list or ACL for everyone is disabled as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and add an object to our S3 bucket. While we are here, I click upload add files and I just selected one of my thumbnails from previous video and then I will upload it. So it's uploaded. So if I try to open this file, now this is the object URL. So I'll copy this and in a new tab, I'll try to access it. Now here I get the error access denied because this file is not publicly accessible. But uh, we would need to give some temporary access to someone so he can view this file. So let's do that. So I will go back to my serverless YAML file and let's add some code to get the pre-signed URL. So we already created the methods tab and I will remove this sample content. And the very first thing I will add is a try catch block. If there's any error, I will return an error response.
Okay, now let's set the code to generate a pre-signed URL. Now, as you have previously seen, in order to generate a pre-signed URL, we need three things, or rather four things. First one is the bucket name and the object key. Now, in this case, we are going to access that DynamoDB image. So it has to be DynamoDB.png. So that's the key. And then the action. So here the action is get object. So because we are going to view that object or download that object. And the bucket name we already know. And finally, we need to specify the expiration time. So out of this four information, we would uh, get the key and the action from the method body. So I will try to access the key event.body. And first I need to pass this JSON. And we will have an attribute called key. Then the action, again, this will be passed from the front end. Copy paste. Here instead of key, let's call it action. And then we need a expiration time. Now this is in seconds. So let's say I need to expire this in five minutes. So 60 seconds into five, 300 seconds. So what about the bucket name? Now bucket name, we can actually pass it down to this Lambda function using an environment variable. So let's do that. So I'll go to serverless YAML file. And this is my function. I can add function level environment variables. So here, environment, and let's call this bucket name. And I can actually hard code this value, but I will instead reference it using this uh, logical name. So I'll use the ref intrinsic function and the logical ID. So if you use ref in S3, so it is going to return the bucket name. Now, if you are unsure about these intrinsic functions, just search for S3 cloud formation. So in the documentation, if you scroll down to the return values, you should see the ref and the get ATT. So the ref intrinsic function for S3 it is going to return the bucket name. Now, while we are here, I need to add some permission to this Lambda function. Because as I already explained, now this Lambda function is the one who's going to create a signed URL. And that Lambda function has a role, and the role should have a permission to get object from S3. So let's add that. So here under the provider section, I'll add this IEM role statements, effect of allow. So this is the allow policy. Action is S3 get object. And let's narrow it down only to this particular AWS S3 bucket resource. Now here I have defined the ARN of our S3 bucket. So let's use another intrinsic function that is uh, get ATT logical name and the attribute name. So the logical name is this and the attribute is we need to access the ARN. Now this is the ARN of the bucket, but I need to access the files inside that bucket. So we need to attach a wildcard, something like this. So in order to add that uh, slash star wildcard, we need to use another intrinsic function called join. So this is going to join two strings. So it is join and it is accepting an array. So let's wrap this up. And the next string is star. And we are going to merge these two strings using slash. So at the beginning, we need to add the delimiter. All right. So now, guys, this is really important because uh, you need to make sure you trim down the permission as much as possible. Okay, there's a small typo. So this also has to be in an array. Okay, make sure you add that. And then uh, let's go ahead and add the rest of our code. Now, first and foremost, I can require the bucket name from my environment variable. Process.env.bucket name. So I have the bucket name. And while I'm here, I will also require S3 from AWS SDK, AWS dash SDK slash client slash S3. Now create an object called simple S3. So this will be an instance of S3. Now I can use this S3 object to request a pre-signed URL with these parameters. So let's say S3 dot get signed URL and as parameters, first I need to define the action, whether this is get action or the put action. 
So I added that here. I need to define what the bucket is. That is the bucket name and the key, the object key and the expires when it is going to expire. And let's reference this one. And this method is going to return me and signed URL. So that is how easy it is. So I will just capture it using URL variable. And finally, I will return that uh, signed URL with the status code of 200 and the body json.stringify and the URL. Okay, perfect. Now we can deploy. By the way, we don't have to install a AWS DK because this is available in the Lambda context. SLS deploy. Let's see if I got any errors. All right, so it is deployed. So let's test this out. So I will copy this endpoint and I will use a Postman to make HTTP request. Paste that URL here. And this is going to be a post request. And this is the API Gateway domain and the stage dev, the default stage, and the API Gateway path. And we need to attach some parameters in our body. So I'll go to the body section, I'll select row, and this is of JSON type. And let's add a JSON array. First thing that we need to pass is the key, the object key. So if you guys can remember, the object key is dynamodb.png and then the action. So we need to get that object. So the action is get object. Make sure that this G is simple. Okay, let's try this. I will send the request. I got an internal error. All right, guys, so that's a very silly mistake. So here it is incorrect. So it has to be status, the typo here. And I will try that again. So after the deployment, let me try that again. So I will send the same request. And here we go. So I got the URL. Now this is the signed URL. Now in the signed URLs, guys, there's this AWS credential associated with it. Do you see? XMZ credentials and the security token. Now these are temporary credentials and they'll be expired in five minutes. So let me open a new tab and hit enter. And here we go. This is our image. <laughs> By the way, although this dynamodb.png, so this is a different thumbnail I apparently have added. <laughs> so this is what I want to show you guys. So as you can see, if I try to access this uh, dynamodb png without the signed URL, I can't. There's access denied. But uh, with the signed URL, I can really access it. But this is only valid for five minutes. All right. So this is what I want to show you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in another video.